I'm going to be tasting the 2008 vintage of the Clos de Marquis Saint-Julien. So this is from Bordeaux. We are on the left bank of Bordeaux and from a commune called Saint-Julien, which is one of my favorites. And this is really a beautiful bottle of wine for so many reasons. First of all, it's a 2008. So we're tasting what I'd call a library vintage, those get harder to find uh, on the market uh, the further you get from the release date. But luckily, uh, we were able to find this and also it's direct from the chateau. So we know that in its slumber over this last decade plus, it's been stored really, really beautifully in the cellars at the chateau. So some things to know about this is um, this is a sibling of Chateau Leoville Lascas. It's not called a second wine to the house. It's what they call a sibling because technically it's not from the same exact place. This is from an individual parcel that was actually owned by the Marquis de Lascasse. And this particular blend is 55% Cabernet Sauvignon, 41% Merlot, 3% Cabernet Franc and 1% Petit Verdot. And that 1% might seem like, why even bother? But Petit Verdot has a very strong personality. So even that 1% can add a little pop of aroma and color in the glass. So I'm using a Bordeaux glass um, to uh, experience this wine. It has a sort of longer elongated um, shape here. And First thing to note is this wine is essentially opaque, um, the, which makes sense because Bordeaux varieties are thicker skinned, which means they're going to have more color in the glass since red wines are fermented on the skins. But because it is an older bottle, because it's a 2008, what I'm noticing that in spite of this very deep, intense color is there's a little bit of what we call bricking at the rim, which happens on older bottles, which means that it's a little bit lighter around the rim of, of this wine. And that's because as red wines age, they actually get lighter in color. So a red wine might start out very ruby in color, opaque, and as it ages over time, it will start to get more garnet in color. And then you might start to see sediment in the bottle. And that's because as those red wines age, the tannins itself start to precipitate out of out of the bottle or out of the wine. And that's why sometimes you choose to decant a red wine off of its sediment because you don't want that to end up in your glass. So I'm just seeing this, this beginnings of bricking around the edge. And then on the nose, you get kind of the beautiful classic markers of Cabernet Sauvignon, this kind of black currant, black cherry, graphite note to it. Has a little bit of um, sort of foresty floor, barnyard note to it in the best way, both I think from where it's located in the world, but also because it does have a bit of maturity to it. And I'm picking up just a bit of that uh, baking spice because this was matured in French oak. So tasting it. Still has a great freshness to it. My mouth is watering, which is what you want because wine should be fresh and vibrant. But also what I'm noticing is this, this wine has um, significant tannin, meaning my mouth feels dry because tannins actually attached to protein. So the tannins are attaching to the protein on my tongue right now. So I'm feeling that, that dryness, but it's a very, fine grained tannin to it. It's not a chunky tannin or, um, or one that detracts from the, the enjoyment of the wine. It's, it's sort of a beautiful, elegant um, backbone to this wine. And then it's, it's got a, a very nice balance to it. Even though it's a 2008, it still has a lot of fresh fruit to it. Again, that sort of uh, blackberry, blackcurrant note to it, cedar I'm getting now as well, but overall just a gorgeous bottle of wine. And this could certainly pair at the table with anything from roasts to steak even. Um, but don't be afraid to play around uh, with food pairings. They're meant to be fun. And um, I certainly am going to enjoy the rest of this tonight. So I hope you enjoy it too. Cheers.